These are four ways to carry extremely hard on Genji like the pros. Genji is one of those characters that comes down to individual skill and awareness, and he can be extremely potent in the right hands. He certainly has seen a fall from grace since the beginning of Overwatch 2, but a strong, smart Genji player can actually get a ton of value against a lot of the currently meta characters, especially with the resurgence of Ana. Let's talk about four major elements that are present in the game of top level Genjis and how you can apply them to your own game to start carrying your matches. Christmas time is here and Santa has left in your stocking an easy and quick way to get to GM. There has never been a better time to get your membership to GameLeap.com. You can use code Santa at checkout and get 50% off. Not only that, not only will you get access to everything, but 10 people will be picked for a free VOD review from our top coaches. That is an insane amount of value, so hurry up and click on the link right now and get your membership today. The first and by far most important thing to start off with is identifying the correct targets. Genji is not an excellent poke character. The only time you should really be poking is when you're waiting for your dive opportunity, or you are trying to soften someone up to go after them. Otherwise, his strength comes from his faster fire rate, higher DPS right click coupled with his combos, which we will come back to in just a moment. His dash gives him the mobility to close distance quickly, and this ability becomes much more potent against enemies who do not have mobility of their own and may struggle to deal with Genji at close range. Some of the obvious characters that can fall into this demographic will include Bastion, Sigma, Ana, and etc. However, there are numerous other factors that you can look out for to identify solid targets to go after. Let's go over a few of them. Number one, targets which have recently used movement cooldowns. Remember when I said Genji's best targets are those that have no movement? Well, a character with their mobility on cooldown is effectively in the same boat as one without any movement at all. Widowmaker is a perfect example of this. Her movement cooldown is pretty long but extremely effective meaning that if you dive a Widow who has her movement ready, she may be able to easily escape you by grappling away suddenly. So as a counterplay, you can pay very close attention before diving her, or try to close distance without using your dash, that way your mobility is still ready to chase when they end up trying to get away from you. This will allow for you to keep up and to more consistently secure picks with your close range combos. Number 2, targets who are isolated from their healers. This is a pretty huge one. I spot DPSs going for flank angles non-stop, especially the lower in rank you go. And the worst part of this is that these people going on these flanks always seem to lose LOS of their healers or their team in general. You can use this to your advantage, take note of where enemy healers are and what their area of influence is, and if you see an enemy stepping out of line on a flank, or if you know it'll be difficult for their healers to get to them, then you'll know that they are a prime target for you to hound after. Going after these vulnerable targets who cannot get help from their healers will put you in your best possible situation where you are 1v1ing in close range. And number 3, targets that are half health or are being pressured by teammates. This is the most obvious one one, but it's worth at least mentioning in this section. Your dash will get reset on a kill or an assist, and if you have deflect ready, you can always use it in order to get yourself out of trouble while backpedaling. This means that you can commit to trying to clean up those squishy targets that are at risk of being dove and be able to get out fairly easily if it doesn't work out. Or if it does work out, then you can possibly snowball even further in by using your dash reset to go after the next weak target. Moving on into our second key aspect of Genji is understanding your combos. Genji is all about combining damage from your abilities slash weapon and your melee. Hitting a chain of 3 headshots and a dash will kill most of the roster and adding a melee into the mix can kill even more of it. This is of course the perfect scenario and assuming you can always get a triple headshot dash kill is a bit asinine, but that doesn't mean that you can't combo multiple strings of shots or soften targets up, that way you can go for combos to the body instead of to the head. It's really simple, use your left click so your shurikens are traveling or your right click if your target is close to you, dash in immediately after so your left click shurikens and your dash are combining on your target and then finish them off with a follow-up right-click immediately after. If you need a melee as well, you can do that immediately after your right-click in order to try to maximize your burst damage combo. But not meleeing too much is vital, and I see a lot of Genjis at lower ranks spam their melee after their right-clicks far too much. This is super detrimental to you since meleeing after each right-click decreases your fire rate in the long haul. You really want to use melee specifically when the target is weak enough to be finished off by it and avoid being caught in the trap, which is going to reduce your overall DPS. So just to quickly recap, you want to use your primary fire if they are at range, or your secondary fire if they are close, use your dash right after so you are sort of syncing your dash with the traveling shurikens, and then follow up with a final right click as well, or sorry, a secondary fire as well, and then you can use your melee as a finisher if you see your target is still low health. It does take some practice to get these combos down consistently, but it's literally the most fundamentally important element of Genji, so don't shy away from the challenge, and be sure to spend your time in queue trying to perfect your combos and get the muscle memory down, either in a deathmatch or in a named training arena, whatever suits you the best.
Our third and fourth tip are going to be a little more nuanced, but they are equally as important, especially as you try to reach your ceiling. Our third tip is know when to dash in the air before you blade versus when to pull your blade close to your target. This is something that has been lost to time a little bit. I, I see most Genjis doing the old dash in the air, use blade while falling, and then look down for dash targets trick. This does have its time and place, but sometimes it's an antiquated strategy since it was mainly formed during the days of Nanoblade's best, when you wanted your Ana to have a a clear sight on you and you could also benefit from knowing the locations of the enemy team especially when overwatch was a slightly less mobile game nowadays however this strategy seems to be the go-to for lots of lower ranked players that have just made it habitual without understanding its strengths and weaknesses which are quite clear the strengths i just went over a clear sight line for yana and a clear sight of the enemy for planning your first dash the weakness however is that this is super telegraphed and makes your blade very easy to predict not only in terms of your blade's actual pathing but your movement as well. Since you are in the air, you risk being headshot or slept far more than if you are strafing while on the ground, since aerial movement is far more predictable. When being nanoed, this can sometimes not be a problem, especially if the enemy team has used their dangerous ults in CC before your blade, and the nano will be able to keep you alive with its damage resistance from any possible headshots or incoming damage in general. When you aren't nanoed, however, you'd be surprised at how many DPS will start to destroy you as you face better opponents. Instead, you should consider opportunities to dive after enemies and hit a right click just before you start blading. This obviously poses some risk as you are now close to a target and it could kill you as you are animation locked. However, this also has some very, very clear benefits. If you have good strafes or good jumps, which we're going to cover in tip number 4 in just a moment, then you can avoid death and be already close to your target on your blade. Furthermore, the right click right before you start the blade animation will soften your target up and make it more likely for you to secure at minimum one kill with your blade, which if you paid attention to the ult advice I tend to give over numerous videos, you'll know is a fantastic start. The final major benefit is you will be harder to see for the entire enemy team. Of course the person you're diving will have a lock on you, but rather than going in the air where the entire lobby is clearly able to see the flying ninja, the extra second of time spent trying to find your location could actually prove to be extremely helpful for your ultimate as the other team is going to struggle as they scramble to actually try to stop it. Our final advice is going to be understanding the power of jumping and the power of strafing. There are important distinctions to know, especially for a character like Genji who spends most of his time dueling enemies in tense 1v1 situations. Knowing when a jump is going to make you a more obvious target and potentially get you killed versus when it will give you better angles and actually make you more difficult to track is absolutely vital for your success in duels. It's pretty straightforward. When you are close to an enemy, use your jump to move around above them and make the shots very difficult since directly upward and directly downward facing shots are among the hardest to hit in FPS games due to how the crosshair moves. Jumping while close to an enemy will also give you an excellent angle for your secondary fire thanks to geometry where you'll be more likely to hit their head hitbox yourself and you'll be able to overall put out more damage and clearly see your target. However, when you are fighting in the mid range or fighting where you aren't close enough to go directly over your target it's important to use your strafing on the ground as a movement tool instead since it will make you quicker and more capable of changing direction at a moment's notice which thus makes you less predictable and more difficult to hit do not fall into the trap of spamming jump on genji as it will in fact make you a much more simple to hit target if you do it at the wrong times especially when facing down deadly hit scans such as cassidy or widowmaker and that is going to do it for today's video guys be sure to like and subscribe for more educational guides and content and i will see you all again soon take care and peace christmas time is here and santa has left in your stocking an easy and quick way to get to gm there has never been a better time to get your membership to gameleap.com you can use code santa at checkout and get 50 percent off not only that not only will you get access to everything but 10 people will be picked for a free vod review from our top coaches that is an insane amount of value so hurry up and click on the link right now and get your membership today.